So welcome everyone. As many of y'all know, we have seen a staggering increase in exploitative sexual material online, largely due to predators taking advantage of new technologies like generative artificial intelligence or AI. Now, almost instantaneously, perpetrators can take use an app on their phone to create fake explicit images depicting real people, commonly referred to as deep fakes. Disturbingly, this is increasingly affecting and targeted at minors, and particularly young girls. Up to 95% of all internet deep fakes depict sexual imagery, with the vast majority of it targeting women and girls. It feels like almost every week now we're seeing a new report of a middle school or high school young girl falling victim to this despicable activity. Young girls are waking up to a text message from their friends saying there's an explicit photo of them circulating on social media or an explicit video. And yet the photos aren't real. They were created using AI, typically taking the face of a real person and using AI technology to graft it seamlessly and imperceptibly to a different image and a sexually explicit image. Imagine being 14 years old and showing up at school where your classmates believe they have seen an explicit photo of you that is a fake and a fraud. The photos may not be real but the pain and the humiliation is. For many young teens, it changes their lives forever. Even worse, these photos can prove very difficult to remove from the internet. They can spread quickly from one phone to another, to another, to another, causing many women and girls to have to live with being victimized over and over again. Today, we are honored to be joined by Ellison Barrow from my home state in Texas. Elliston is brave enough to be here today sharing her personal story. She's joined by her mother, Anna. Also joining us is Dorota Mani from New Jersey, whose daughter Francesca has also been a vic victim of sexualized deepfake images. Dorota and her daughter have now made it their mission to spread awareness about this issue and to help prevent other young girls from having to go through what Francesca and Ellison went through. To all three of you, thank you for being here today. Ellison, thank you for being here. This is, this is a scary thing for an adult to face, but it's particularly scary for a teenager. Thank you for your courage. I'm also joined by my colleague, Senator Lummis, who is one of the 12 bipartisan sponsors of the new legislation to help protect victims like Elliston and Francesca. Our bill, the Take It Down Act, will protect and empower victims of non-consensual intimate imagery, also known as NCII, by criminalizing its publication making it unlawful for a person to knowingly put such content on social media or other platforms. This includes both real and computer-generated sexual images that depict real, identifiable people. There are a few bills in the Senate right now that are working to tackle this issue. And I want to be clear. Our legislation is designed to be complementary to those efforts. I'm supportive of the other efforts. And this is designed to fill gaps that the other bills do not address. As the ranking member of the Senate Commerce Committee, my legislation is the first of its kind to require websites, including social media sites, 
to have in place a process to remove such content within 48 hours of a request from a victim. The sites must also remove any copies of those images. You know, it can be maddening dealing with big tech and trying to get these images, these fake images of your child taken down. And big tech over and over again has demonstrated an arrogance, an imperiousness, a lack of accountability. We're all aware that this happened to Taylor Swift. And if you happen to be a global pop star, you can get the images pulled down. When Taylor Swift rightly said these images are disgusting, pull them down, big tech responded. But if you're not fortunate enough to be a global celebrity, if you're just a teenager living in Texas or New Jersey or anywhere else, big tech ignores your pleas for help. When I met with Anna last week, she mentioned the Im images of Elliston were still on Snapchat. And that her repeated efforts to call Snapchat to talk to someone were met by bureaucratic resistance. Were met by talk to somebody else, talk to somebody else, send an email, a brick wall that got nowhere. Last week in my office, I turned to my team, I said, get on the phone with Snapchat right now. If need be, put me on the phone with their CEO. I want those images taken down. They were taken down within 24 hours. Now, if you don't happen to be in a situation where a sitting member of Congress intervenes on your behalf, you know what you get right now? You get a closed door and a stone wall. That is not fair and that is not right. It should not take an elected member of Congress intervening to have these despicable lies pulled down from online. I'm proud to be joined in introducing this legislation with my colleagues, Senators Klobuchar, Lummis, Blumenthal, Capito, Rosen, Bud, Butler, Manchin, Young, Hickenlooper, Cassidy, and Heinlein. Twelve co-sponsors, bipartisan, across the board, across the ideological spectrum, we all agree this is a common sense step to criminalize the publication of non-consensual intimate images and to provide the statutory right. If this garbage is put up by you, if it's put up, if it's put up against you, if it's put up against your child, you have a right within 48 hours to force big tech to take it down. We're also grateful for the over three dozen groups, including victims advocates, law enforcement, medical professionals, and others, who have come out in support of our bill. We are humbled by the overwhelming support this bill has received just upon introduction. Here with us today are representatives from three of those organizations. Yoda Soros, Chief Legal Officer of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NICMIC. Don Hawkins, the CEO on the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, and Stefan Turkheimer, the Vice President of Public Policy at the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. We are grateful for your support and your hard work in this field dealing with victims of horrific crimes. And as experts on sexual ex exploitation, we look forward to hearing from you today on the importance of passing this legislation. Most importantly, I'm proud that victims feel that the Take It Down Act will make a positive impact. Elliston, Anna, Dorota, I know that after all your families have been through, you have made it your mission to ensure that no other young girl has to go through this nightmare. You are protecting teenage girls across this country. You're protecting moms and dads from going through the agony of not being able to protect your child. And at a time when there's lots of partisan division in Washington, it is encouraging to see that we can come together and find bipartisan agreement. 
And with that, I want to introduce Anna McAdams initially. Tell your story. 